Good afternoon. It is my pleasure today to continue the series of Journal Club. This, this series is dedicated for a short presentation to focus on one point. Today, I'm going to focus on this critical issue, timing of initiation of renal replacement therapy in acute kidney injury, a message from the START AKI trial. So before I'm going to discuss this trial, I'm going to refer to this presentation that was delivered on last May to discuss the delayed versus early initiation of renal replacement therapy for severe acute kidney injury, a systematic review and, and individual data meta-analysis, a paper published in The Lancet. And during this presentation, I ended with the delaying renal replacement therapy initiation, but with close patient monitoring might lead to a reduced use of renal replacement therapy, thereby saving health resources. This is because the meta-analysis didn't find any beneficial effect of early uh, start. So long as we observe the patient until we have critical indication uh, so this is the, do, the conclusion of this article. Today, I'm going to highlight start AKI uh, trial, time, timing of initiation of renal replacement therapy in acute kidney injury, a paper published uh, uh, in the New England Journal of Medicine. Start means a standard versus accelerated initiation of renal replacement therapy in AKI. And I'm going to uh, explain what's meant by standard and what's meant by accelerated initiation. This is an open label, randomized controlled trials. The patients were randomly allocated one to one to one of the two arms, standard and accelerated. And this, this study was conducted in 168 hospitals in 15 countries. A very nice study, intervention study. And the patients are adults admitted to intensive care uh, unit with acute kidney injury, uh, stage two or three, based on Kidigo definition. The number of patients in each arm is more than 1,400. This means that the study is powerful to uh, show a difference and to show a conclusion. Regarding the randomization, we have accelerated strategy group uh, and we have the standard strategy group. For accelerated strategy group, clinicians were to start a renal replacement therapy as soon as possible and within 12 hours after patients had met fully eligibility criteria. In the standard strategy group, uh, clinicians were discouraged from initiating renal replacement therapy until the development of one or more of the following criteria. So we need one or more to start dialysis. Serum potassium exceeding or equal to six millimole per liter or BH equal or less than 7.2. Serum bicarbonate equal or less than 12 millimole per liter or evidence of severe respiratory failure and the clinical perception of volume overload or persistent acute kidney injury for at least 72 hours after randomization. So these are the two groups uh, uh, criteria. The, this table shows the demographic characteristics of both accelerated and standard group. You can find here the age, gender, this is the female percentage in each uh, arm, weight, creatinine on admission, pre-existing conditions like chronic kidney disease, hypertension, diabetes, heart failure, coronary, liver disease, metastatic cancer, and others. Uh, the, uh, and this is the continuation. The hospital acquired a risk for acute kidney injury, either cardiopulmonary bypass, aortic aneurysm, other vascular surgery, obstetric complication, exposure to radio contrast material, receipt of amino glycosides or amphotericin B, and the clinical condition at randomization, sepsis, septic shock, and others. As you see in this, uh, in this table, the 
characteristics were balanced between the two groups. Fine. The primary outcome criteria shown from this study, and this is a very interesting, there is no difference in between the two groups, either accelerated or standard. Regarding death from any cause at 90 days, as you see here, in the accelerated 43.9% uh, and here 43.7% in standard strategy. And the relative risk is one. This means no difference regarding mortality. If there is no difference regarding mortality, this means that rushing attitude to do dialysis is not uh, beneficial at all. And it carries even the cost of replacement therapy. Secondary outcome points, as you see here, uh, renal replacement therapy dependence among survivors at 90 days, if you look here in the accelerative strategy, for patients who uh, the clinicians were rushing, 10% versus 60% uh, dependence on RRT. This means that early strategy or accelerated strategy of doing replacement therapy was associated with a problem here, increasing the relative risk of renal replacement therapy dependence among the survivor, uh, survivor 1.74, 75% uh, increase, 0.75 increase, in the accelerated strategy. And for other categories, there is no significant difference. Uh, uh, as you see here, death or renal replacement therapy dependence, major adverse kidney events, serum creatinine at 90 days, uh, estimated GFR, death from any cause, there is no difference. And this is the use of health uh, services. As you see here, this is table showing different criteria, surviving or non-surviving, and a lot of characters, no difference in secondary characters. What about the categorization? Analysis according to subgroups, so subgroup analyses. There is no difference between accelerated strategy or a standard strategy regarding gender, estimated GFR, simplified acute physiology scoring index, presence or absence of sepsis, type of ICU admission, surgical or medical, even geographic region, North America, Europe, European, Australian, and New Zealand, uh, Asian, or South America. Uh, regarding these subgroups, there was no difference between the two arms. This means that for efficacy-wise, no difference in mortality, and in secondary in the points, there is no difference except in increasing dependence on RRT in patients with accelerated strategy of dialysis. What about side effects or adverse events? I'm expecting more adverse events in accelerated strategy. This is why this, this is 195 per thousand in comparison to 128 per thousand events, and the B value is significant. So, accelerated strategy is associated with more adverse effects. One of the uh, important adverse effects is hypotension, 66 per, uh, per thousand uh, in comparison to 39 per thousand. So increased hypotension in accelerated strategy. Another B value here, uh, decreased phosphate, hypophosphatemia is more common in accelerated strategy. If you look here, 43 per thousand in comparison to 23%. So there is no difference in primary outcome and secondary outcome, and there is increased adverse events with the accelerated strategy. This is the conclusion. Among critically ill patients with acute kidney injury, an accelerated renal replacement strategy was not associated with lower risk of death at 90 days than a standard strategy. This is a very strong study funded by the Canadian Institute of Health Research and others, and this is the, uh, the gov, uh, clinicaltrial.gov number. What I want to say, so long as there is no beneficial effects on the survival advantage, and uh, there is increased adverse effects, so this is why we should be wise in uh, dealing with our patients, evaluating the patients, if the patients are admitted to ICU, we should follow them on hourly basis. And if there is any rise of critical indication, 
of doing dialysis will go ahead for dialysis. But if there is no critical indication, there is no need to, st to be rushing in our decision. So rushing and accelerated dialysis strategy is not needed at all. And it's associated with some prices and some adverse events as shown here. I know that there is no 100% perfect trial. And this is an open label study. This means that uh, they may, there may be performance bias, but this is one of the strong evidence against very rapid dialysis, rushing dialysis, accelerated dialysis, or early dialysis in critically uh, ill patients associated with acute kidney injury. I should stop here. Thank you very much. Hoping uh, if you have any questions, please write it in a comment on the video. Thank you and goodbye.